Okay. So let's start the uh, uh, great. Mm. Let me just stop my MongoDB server first. Okay. It's in uh, Node this LS CD in our Node this programs. LS. There is a database folder. So let's start with the MongoDB server here. MongoD space hyphen hyphen DB path equals to dot slash databases space hyphen hyphen log path equals to um, dot slash databases slash my log dot log hyphen hyphen four this our uh, okay so our uh, mongodb server is started and we can successfully able to connect to our database okay uh, Yeah, no worries. So, yeah, now let's uh, see what we have done in the last lecture. So, in the last lecture, uh, we have uh, connected to our MongoDB database using Mongo, Mongoose, okay, Mongoose library. So, we have installed Mongoose library, uh, then package. Then we have connected to our mongoose database is mongodb database is mongoose.connect don't type fog. yeah it's okay if you don't type fog but uh, in that case you need to keep your terminal open okay don't close it okay uh, if you close it then your mongodb server will stop okay the uh, hyphen hyphen four command will not work in windows it is for linux or uh, mac command but for Windows, if you want to start it in the background, you can use a, is a, it as a service. So if you remember services uh, uh, window, where you can just run it in a background as a background service. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, that I, I guess I have told you, yes, okay, in the picture. So do we have to write hyphen hyphen TV path all the time? If you are uh, running MongoDB, uh, like in a different database path then you have to specify otherwise you can use config uh, configuration file as well okay i'll just show you the configuration file that uh, i have created for one of my project um yeah so this is a configuration file you can create like this where uh, you can specify the uh, database uh, sorry log path then database path and for two so here you just have an ip address and port number okay then you just need to start your mongodb server by specifying this config uh, path okay uh, yeah. there is a hyphen hyphen config option uh, if you specify mongodb space hyphen hyphen config and then the path to that config file then it will run in uh, run those uh, using those parameters okay you don't have to write uh, the database path every time okay. hello sir yes Sashish. Uh, my search is not working properly search is not working what's the issue in the search uh, when i it? type name and age mm -hmm. uh, when i type different age uh, mm -hmm. then also the data is showing different age can you show share your screen yes sir uh, 
सर्वरीच नव्हतं आणि सो आशिष अँड एज फिफ्टीन then also they are showing then also it is showing you uh, it's 26 on 34 no uh, uh you have a ashish in both the data sir right? uh yes sir name ashish in both the uh, data sir right? and you are using or condition so uh, and no no this is in query in the like in the query parameters Okay. That query parameters in the query parameters and is nothing but just to separate your key value pair. Okay, it is working as an or. Ah, uh, yeah. So or basically it is working as an or because you have specified that in a uh, okay. code. If so one is matching, then it is not. That and me. and your uh, database and uh, there is no relation between them. Okay. okay. This and is the URLs and. here basically we are we use and to separate your key value pairs so name is a key value is ashish okay. now this is one key value pair to write a second way key value pair that is age equals to 15 we have to separate it using and ampersand sign okay okay if you open the code you will see we have used or condition see you are specifying dollar or there it is just there in the code Um, search no? you were already there you don't need to go down ha ah, yeah yeah this one see the all or you are using or condition here okay right? so that's the reason it is if you comment this and uncomment uh, the 42 and 43 line you will see the and condition okay okay okay, yeah. okay sir thank you sir okay now okay so this uh, so in the last lecture and also we have used user routes for all the routes related queries like crud operations we have uh, replaced all the crud operations with our mongodb database connection and we have also created a model schema uh, using mongos okay uh, okay now um today we will uh, go uh, go deeper into this mongo schema okay but before that i would like to cover one small topic okay which is uh, right now if you see in the server.js file okay we are using this mongodb uh, connection string directly in the code also the port is also here which is used directly okay if someone fi finds this code the server that js file okay they will be able to know the database uh, query string they will be able to know the port on which you are running the uh, server okay which is uh, in in some uh, some case is sensitive data also the mongodb query string is also sensitive data because once uh, anyone knows that uh, this is a query string they will be able to connect your database through other application as well okay unless and until they give the Uh, we open all the ports okay uh, but to uh, avoid your writing the query string uh, directly into the you are uh, into the code we can use environment variables for this okay environment variables are the variables which are stored in your machines environment okay if you are on windows you can check your environment variable settings right if you go to the search bar and type environment variables okay you will see edit environment variables and then you specify path then in some cases you have specified java underscore home java underscore path there there are other variables as well system variables user variables these are the environment variables which we can directly these environment variables uh, basically specifies where 
from where to pick commands from where to pick the path values variables okay for this purpose we use this environment variables and to store your variables locally on machine which we can use it anywhere in your machine okay now no, this environment variables uh, in linux and mac they are also so stored in bash profile file dot bash profile file there, there if, you, if you store this environment variables as a key value pair key equals to value okay the key can be anything there uh, you can use this environment variable okay but uh, if you want to store this environment variables on your machine okay uh, then you can store it in the machine like uh, we do in a windows or linux but uh, there is a better way if you are using it in a code okay what we can do is we can create a env file which is specific to each and every machine we don't have to uh, publish or um, uh, commit this file to production the production environment variables will be different the development environment variables will be different and your production uh, testing environment variables will be different okay the one advantage of using is like uh, you don't have to expose your uh, values directly in a code and the second advantage is you can uh, run the same code on different different environments by uh, like in development production testing okay by specifying different different environment uh, settings okay so how will you do the environment variable settings okay uh, so for that uh, we need to create dot env file here okay so i'll uh, just right click but that should be at the top huh? okay not in the any of the folder it should be at the top we'll create a dot env file okay dot env dot env file uh, in this file we will write environment variables like uh, we have a port so we'll specify port as port equals to 4000 okay each environment variable is uh, separated by a new line character and environment variables are specified as a key value pair where key equal is on left hand side and value will be on the right hand side of your equals to symbol okay the second variable let's say i want to specify this entire string okay mongodb colon this entire string this so i'll just cut it from here and let's call it as a db string equals to this we don't need to write it in a single code or double code. You can write it in a single code, double code, but by default, they will be considered as a string. Okay. Now I have removed this in uh, from here, and also let's say I'm removing this from here. Now, how will I access this environment variables? Let's say I have saved this file and I want to access this environment variables into my code. Okay. Now for this, we'll require one package. Okay. The package name is env okay then go for env and pmjs.com okay there you will find this env for package okay just install this package using this command npmi.env so i'll just use npmi.env your package will be installed once installed now uh, you can check it in our package.json file as well env is installed now, how will you use it? To use it in any file, you just have to do one thing that is uh, require import that file uh, package that is dot env and call dot config method. Okay, of it. That uh, you have just have to call dot config method of dot env file and then it's done. Okay, you can now how can you access the dot environment variable? All the environment variables, any in environment variable whether it is a system environment variable whether it is user defined environment variable or if it is an environment variable which is which we have created here okay like in dot env file so and the file name should be dot env okay that's compulsory so here uh, you can use them using process dot env dot okay your environment variable name let's say port okay so our environment variable name is port so here the value 4000 will be taken and it will be assigned to your port variable okay the same thing we can do it here in the co connect process dot env dot db underscore string okay i think it's a db underscore string only so db underscore string just mention it here okay and you will find that i am able to connect to the server you can see this port number i have used it in a server dot listen and here as well 
so it should come 4000 and here your database should you should be able to connect to the database successfully okay let's run it and check whether this is connected or not you can see uh, my 4000 port is printed here and the database connection is also successful this this means that you are successfully able to connect to the database uh, using this env file okay so all the dot environment variables are uh, successfully imported here and we are able to use them in our file okay now there are a lot of and lot more environment variables are there in your application you can uh, just write dot process dot env dot user this is uh, default like uh, every uh, operating system has a default user okay like i have i have logged in through uh, pranit okay so this is my username okay i have logged into this machine using pranit user okay so this user will print this pranit name okay this is default use uh, environment variable you can see that over here this is pranit so this is the default environment variable. So the default environment variables can be directly accessed. And you can also create those dot environment variables using dot env file. And you will be able to access them using the process dot env option. OK. Yes, any questions? What to do for port 3000? You can use port 3000 as well. OK, port 3000 is also available. Just use it here, save it and now if you save it in the dot env file uh, the server will not restart because it's uh, not uh, the, your node one is not watching that file so you just have to save it here and you will see 3000 but actually in my machine 3000 port is already in use okay so i'll not be able to use this port so that's the reason i'm using 4000 port okay if you want to use you can use it okay and if the port is available it will use that port just have to change the port okay understood everyone we will require this dot env uh, for the uh, topics as well then we will using when we when we will use um jwd tokens and all that time we will need to store secret variables and all we will store those secret variables in dot env files so that no one will be able to access them through the code Understood, everyone? OK. So first, install .env using npm i.env. And once installed, uh, do the, make the changes in your server.js file. First, uh, import it, call config method, and then replace your port with process.env.port, and replace your connection string with process.env.db string. Also create this .env file as well. Okay, it should be at the top, and here it should specify the port number and db string. Okay, do it once done. Let me know. Thank mm -hmm. 
What about others? No, sir. Okay, we'll wait. सर यस वो जरा स्क्रोल कर तो खाली एरर का जरा बो पहले अनइंस्टॉल कर डायरेक्ट कट करोटीएन राइट है ना एरर चेक कर मॉड्यूल नॉट फाउंड पैकेज इंस्टॉल नहीं ओके 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 कनेक्टेड सक्सेसफुली तो तो एरर खाली राइट ऑटो डिटेक्ट कर दे ऑटो डिटेक्ट कर वो का डिटेक्ट करते हैं जावास्क्रिप्ट डिटेक्ट करते हैं का हां हां मतलब चार क्लिक कर आणि चेंज कर ते पण वो ते एप्लीकेबल सगळ्याला होईल ना असं 
हाँ तक प्रॉपर्टीज टाक नहीं नहीं फिर फाइल प्रॉपर्टीज हाँ सिलेक्ट कर तो बेसिकली वी एस कोड तुला कारण तो जावास्क्रिप्ट फाइल कन्सिडर कर फाइल टू फाइल चेंज होता अच्छा सर माय प्रीवियस मंगोडीबी इंटीग्रेशन प्रैक्टिकल इज पेंडिंग आई एम राइटिंग दिस डाउन विल डू दिस आफ्टर दैट श्योर नो प्रॉब्लम मंगोडीबी इंटीग्रेशन अच्छा बट डू दैट ओके या सेकंड जॉइन का करेक्ट Okay, now uh, this dot env thing is done. Let's uh, now move again back to our uh, mongoose, okay, or MongoDB integration. So here we have created a schema, okay, where where we are specifying name and age, okay. But this is just a basic schema. Now using mongoose, we can create some complex schema as well, okay. Now let's say uh, you have this name. But name, I want now. What are what are the different types of uh, data types I can use for this fields? Okay, so string and name number, so we saw. Okay, we, if you go to Mongo's uh, Mongo's website, and if you go to its uh, regular talks and uh, schemas. Okay, uh, I think uh, yeah, these are the permitted data types that you can use. Okay. string and number to we already saw we can use date as a data type if you are entering date javascript date there is a buffer also uh, if you remember in the uh, when we were reading the file read file okay that time uh, whatever the output was printed while re uh, reading the output was buffer okay so that is a buffer if you want to uh, write some file or contents of some file into the database you can use buffer as well then boolean true or false mixed means like uh, it can be object as well object id is the if you remember uh, mongodb has a underscore id and that has a object id okay uh, i just told you in the last lecture as well then array you can uh, also uh, write it as an array decimal 128 it's a big number okay that's why we have number has a limited um as you can say limited limit Okay, there is a limit, but decimal one to this is a higher limit. Okay, map is key value pairs. Okay, generally I haven't used map anywhere, but uh, you can use that as well. Okay, and they have mentioned uh, how we can use any every uh, data type here. Okay, but uh, let's see um, how we can use other data types. Okay, so let's consider this name. Okay, I want to split this name into two parts: first name and last name. Okay. Let's consider this name is split into two parts, first and last. Now, first is first name is a string, last is also string. Okay, so you can use mixed data type. Mixed data type is nothing but you can specify object. Okay, so here we can specify uh, first uh, here. Okay, first colon the type of first string, then last colon the type of last this string. Okay. So this name will be an object where we will have first and last. First is a string, last is also a string. Okay, this is uh, you can say it's a nested object. If you remember from the MongoDB lecture, we had a nested object than arrays. So here you can specify nested object here. Name is a nested object now. Okay, with first and last. Now let's say age is also a number. Let's add a few more fields. Okay. Um, So I'll add password as well. Okay, we are, uh, I'm adding password because uh, we are going to use password later on uh, while logging and registration. Okay, uh, so here we'll specify string. Okay, now a password and email. Let's add email as well. Name, email, password, string. Okay, so let's specify these fields and now let's try to uh, make changes in our code according to the Uh, data we have available on your user schema. Okay, 
So for now, uh, what changes we need to do is we have to go to user routes.js. This uh, operation, we don't have to do anything because it is just finding everything and just returning it. Here, uh, if you want to make it, you can make it later on. I just, uh, I'm not uh, investing much time into the search. You can do that later on. Okay, if you want to search into search in an email, you can search it. Password will not be required. Okay, so you can use name in the search here. Okay, uh, get by ID. We don't need to do anything here because it is just getting the user based on ID. So this also I'll skip. Post this we need to change because here we are using only name and age. Okay, now consider instead of name, your user client will pass first name, last name email password and age okay so here i will replace first name with first name comma last name comma email comma password and age okay so these five fields uh user is passing okay now i want to uh use these five fields in your user object now remember the structure that we have we have a name inside that name we have first and last so we will use name colon object first and then your first name comma last and then your last name okay you will see automatically the suggestions are also appearing over there then uh, email will be outside of this name object then password is also there uh, since key name and field names are variable names are same uh, then i'm using just the key names over there okay not the field so here the user object is created and your user will be created here and it will be saved, okay? Let's see uh, how we can um, uh, use post operation. Okay, let's go and open the postman. Okay, now here uh, we had a search operation. Let's use users and post okay and in the post uh, we will use body in the body we have a name now we will change it to first name okay because if you remember we have these as first name last name email password age okay so let's say first name then last name okay then age is uh, email and uh, password okay specified name one two three at the rate okay and then eight okay now let's uh, uh fire this api and see whether this works or not and how your database data is stored in a database okay so send it and you will see your data is created with the exact same structure that you have specified okay with id and underscore school you can see name name inside name we have first and last and first name last name is entered here email password age and underscore id underscore underscore group okay so your database uh, data is saved into your database okay and we can see it is in in structured format you can check it in the mongodb database as well if you want to okay uh, you can just um, connect to your database using mongo sh then switch to your uh, database, uh, Medisa, right? Okay, and then inside that, you can say db dot users dot find, and you will find your data uh, is stored as name as object with first and last email password age and the and underscore id and underscore password. So that's how you can store the data into database okay and i can see mongodb is a structureless database so you even if you have a name uh, or name with first and last it doesn't matter to mongodb okay so that's how we can uh, do the create operation okay but uh, using few fields now i'll change uh, update as well update in a put and patch here also we'll need first name and last name last name then email we won't be using password here because password is only used to create a, per, a user while creating a user or registering a user okay password can be changed if you want to change the password or forget password at that time only we will change the password okay 
it can be changed in the update operation okay so we'll just specify first name last name email and age okay and accordingly we will change the values like uh the now it will be how do you change the name you can use dot first and then you can use first name here Oops, first name and first name okay then we will use name dot last and then we will use last name okay then you can use a email and email here okay. age and age will be there and you can save it so that's how we can directly assign and save okay while in case of patch you just have to check the values so first name last name and email will be there instead of name okay but we'll have to check every value here okay so now uh, first name first is first name then name dot first goes to first name okay then last name the last dot last okay and then we will have email as well okay. here it would be email I, this will just check and then uh, update so patch operation put operation and delete we don't need to do anything because it is deleting based on the id okay so you just have to change uh, create and update operation okay understood everyone okay have to create a mix type create this mix type and make the changes accordingly then they will see the more things into your schema okay schema or model once done let me know
simply show the patch code sure patch code is so so simple just have to check with if conditions then sure i will do it what about others is it done <clears throat> Okay. Shall we proceed? I think yes, then we can. Let's see. Okay, good. Okay, now let's see. Um, okay. So we have created a, uh, or we have modified our post API according to the schema. Okay. Now let's do one thing. Uh, I'll create a user without specifying email ID. Okay. And let's see whether I'm able to create a user or not. Okay. MongoDB doesn't have a schema, so it would not throw an error. But um, let's see whether this works or not. Okay. Send. And you, you can see I'm able to create the user. Okay. You can get all users and find that user as well. Okay. You will see the this is a previous one and this is a new one created without email ID. Okay. Uh now my application or my application uh, states that your email ID is required. Okay. 
and I'm still able to create the user without email ID. Okay, that's because there is no restriction on your schema. Okay, or there is no restriction on the MongoDB side itself. Okay, MongoDB doesn't restrict you to enter any value, any type of value, any fields. Okay, so you can, it's a structure list. So how can you uh, add validations in your schema? Okay, so Mongoose gives you all this flexibility to specify the data type. So it also gives you the flexibility to add as validations. Okay, so let's say I want to uh, make this email field as required. Okay, so <clears throat> when you want to enter uh, more than more fields, uh, more than one field in your email, you can just do one thing. You can right object here and then specify the type here type colon uh, string comma required colon true okay so here what uh, this schema uh, this schema has an email field with uh, the email fields type would be string and the required property is set to true that means the email field is required this is a validation uh, inbuilt validation uh, for Mongo schema, so it will make your email field required. Similarly, we can do the same thing for password as well. Okay, password is also let's say required for us while creating a user. Okay, so it's also required. So I specified required to. Uh, let's say age is a number, but okay, age is not required, but your minimum age should be eighteen. Okay, so let's specify minimum as. It, there is a minimum validator in your mongoose uh, schema so if the min is 18 that means you cannot enter age below 18 okay it should be 18 or up okay let's save it and now check whether i am still able to create a user without email id or password okay so i'll just remove this and send uh, so it's a get sorry it's a get operation post operation send and now you will find an error here okay now this error you can see the status is coming as 400 bad request that's because when uh, we say post operation if there is an error in try block while creating a user while saving a user we are uh, catching that error and we are state saying status as 400 and then we are specifying date uh, object with data and error okay so you'll find an object with data and error and status is 400 bad request okay and here we can see the error uh, ob object is this big where we can see the email field where a message is also there path email is required okay so and also message user validation field message user validation field email path is required okay so this telling you what uh, the email field is required okay so let's specify email let's uh, remove the password and see whether my it is giving the error for password send it and now you will find path password is required email is there password is uh, also needed okay so let's remove both of them and see what happens send and now you will see both the errors path email is required path password is required so both the paths are required that means both the fields are required okay uh, let's add them here and now try to change the age to let's say 60 okay we have a minimum required for requirement for age as 80 and let's send it and you will find the error as path age is less than minimum allowed value 18 okay so you can see minimum is 18 and actual value specified is 60 that is not allowed yeah so that's how you can see the errors now let's say uh, if i specify all the values correctly and if i try to create a user send and you will see the user is created successfully okay you can get the user all users and you'll find three four five and six this is the last user created with email id password and everything okay understood everyone how this validations will work now as we have a validation for minimum we can also have a validation for maximum if you need a maximum uh, restriction you can specify max okay uh, as we have a minimum and maximum validation we also have min length and max length validation and now for number we have a min and max where the minimum number and maximum number is there but for string we can have min length and max length okay so when you have min length like this say min length 
colon. So minimum should be six characters. So my password should be minimum six characters and maximum, uh, let's say it should be 20 characters. Okay. So your password should be between six to 20 characters. Okay. And if you'd save this and try to create a user with, let's say, less than six characters, admin, send it. Uh, okay, so post this, send it, and you will find path password is shorter than the minimum allowed length, six. Okay, so admin length is actually one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so which is shorter than six. Okay, uh, if you specify one, two, three at the rate, which is more than six, but less than 20 send it you will find the user is created okay you can get the user and you will find all the users last user is here okay understood validations part one more thing uh as you can see the age when i specified let's say 16 okay it is giving me uh the error as an error message as something like this okay so if you want to change this error message like path age is not uh quite human readable right so if you want to change this me message okay with your own message then in that case what you can do is for min you can specify array where the first value is the minimum value that you need okay and the second value is the message which you want to specify if the error is coming okay so let's say I specify minimum age okay should be 80. Okay. so when you run this the validation error will trigger and you will see the message as minimum age should be 80. okay so that's how you can customize your message as well so here you can customize the message same way you can specify it here as well like six comma the message okay and for max length as well and required as well if you want to specify required first comma true true comma and the second value okay so it's like password is required okay something like this so if i don't specify password here and try to create so you see password is required okay understood these validations yes okay okay now uh, write it down once done let me know so we can see some more things into our schema or model
Okay. Yeah. Okay. What about others? Okay, great. Now the validations are done. Let's see um, some more fields like um, okay. Uh, sometimes when you uh, not sometimes but most of the time when you insert the values into your uh, collection, okay, you can see we have underscore ID, name, age, okay, or everything else like this okay but we need a created date and updated date as well so when your object is created and where your object is modified okay we need that fields as well those can be used for analytical purpose or for um searching sorting okay so for that purpose we need these created fields updated fields as well okay and these are like date fields like right? So you can create a date field here, like created at or updated at, okay? But uh, the problem here is that uh, you, when you are uh, creating it, like post, you are using post method, okay? At that time, you have to enter a created that at colon new date, okay? To, uh, modified also, modified at a uh, new date. Now, in case of put and patch, you have to just, uh, update the modified field not the created at field because created will be only once modified will be every time when you are updating okay now these are not the only operations where you will modify the modify the user object you may modify your user object when you are changing the password field as well like change password forget password okay or you can change any uh, user active inactive as well at that time also you will modify the user object that time also you need to modify uh, update the modify field okay now this is like you have to do this for every uh, you have to remember every time which field i have to modify and which field i have to uh, mm, modify at what point of time okay so for this what uh, mongoose does is mongoose uh, provides you okay uh, timestamps object okay this is the first uh, parameter in the schema which is your uh, schema object. There is a second parameter where you can specify the configuration options or options where I can specify timestamps colon true. Timestamps, okay? So timestamps colon true. Now, what this will do is this will automatically add created field and modified field, okay? Once you uh, create the user, create the object, on created field or modified field, both will be updated. And once you update a uh, object, okay, using put or pause or any method, any way, okay, once you update it, it will modify the modified field, not the created at field. Okay, let's check it out. So I'll just change the fields here, Pranit one, More one, Pranit one. Okay, I'll change the age to twenty four. Let's create the user first and check whether I can find created and updated field. Send it. And you will see created at and updated at fields with the exact timestamp at which they are created. This is a, a UTC timestamp. So that's the reason you can see it's 1443. It's like a five and a half hours uh, behind. Um, okay. According to the UTC timestamp, we are five, uh, five, point, uh, five and a half hours ahead of the UTC. Okay. So you can see the UTC timestamp here and created and updated both are same times okay but now let's try to update it using patch method okay let's uh, update the age to let's say 25 okay i don't want to update everything just want to update the age from 25 to 20 24 to 25 uh, okay i need to specify the id as well uh, slash id send it and you will see the user has been updated age is updated See the created at date and updated at date. Both are different. This is same when we have created and this has been changed now to a new field. 
okay so that's how this timestamps can be used to uh, add created it and modified attributes understood everyone the timestamps will okay. don't have to do anything M mongoose will take care of uh, adding uh, mo or uh, modifying the created at and updated at fields you can just use those fields you just have to use the second parameter here which is timestamps colon two okay it will do, do the rest of the stuff for you okay do this try it out once done let me know the patch modified value will change to old data once it's refreshed uh in patch modify see we are uh, just checking whether the fields are there or not if the fields are there then we are uh, updating those fields if the fields are not there then we are not modifying any field so your existing fields will remain as it is only the field which we are trying to modify will only be updated okay so you can check it out here as well. Like I am just modifying age. The rest of the fields are remaining as it is. Okay. The age is also only modified. And see, uh, created and updated at uh, the updated at field is modified because we are updating this user object. There's a reason is the updated at it's modified, and that is done by Mongoose for us. Okay. Don't do to worry when we have specified timestamps colon two. Understood. Actually, sir, my doubt is that uh, we have modified the age now. Huh? After refreshing, will it go back to the old data? No, no. It will it not. Will not we are modifying it because we want to, right? Uh, yes. We want, to, want it to go back. Even to... using patch method, we can add new fields as well, right? Yes. Okay. We can add new fields as well. But okay. this, those fields will only be added if they are specified in the schema. Okay, sir. Okay, yes. okay sir. Thank you that's because of the mongoose only okay if you don't this mongoose so uh, then uh, we can obviously add them are you not feeling well your voice seems to be okay take care Done, guys. Okay. Take care, by the way. Okay, what about others? Okay, great. Okay. So this is done now. Uh, if you have observed uh, the data here, okay. So if I try to get, let's say, uh, get all the users, okay. And let's say I want to get this particular, let's say, last user, okay. So I'll specify slash ID here. And if I try to get that user, you will find that I am getting all the details, and I'm also getting password field here. Okay. So password field is not required. I don't need a password field. Why should I need a password field here? Okay, when I'm fetching the uh, user, right? So I don't need this password field. How can I avoid this password field? Okay, to avoid this password field, what you can do is, now this is a get by ID, right? We are getting it by ID. So let's go to get by ID. So here it is get by ID. Post, uh, now also when we are creating, we are, we are sending the created user object along with that, you can see the password is also returned, okay? uh just check first let's check that then we will see this one okay, so send it and you will see the user is created along with the password and password is also sent so you won't want to send a password so in that case what you can do is uh you can just take it in a variable let's say const saved user equals to await user dot save and from this saved user 
you can remove the password field by specifying it as undefined okay when you specify field as undefined your field will not be included in your object okay then just send it and now try to create an object uh, with this let's say i change it to two 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 like that set and you will find password field is removed from there. okay so this can be used uh, if you are creating and sending the user but when you are getting the user okay, by id so in that case you are directly getting it from the field okay here also you can do the same thing uh, while uh, when you get the user you can just specify user dot password equals to undefined and then send the user but there is a more better approach when you are finding it you can specify which fields i want and which fields i don't want okay that you can specify uh, if you remember in mongodb lecture we have done uh, projection okay so first parameter is always a filter for a fine and the second parameter is always the projection okay so in this projection you can specify the object and we can specify which fields we want and which fields or which fields we don't want so we don't want password field so specify password as zero okay zero means in exclude it one means include okay and we are specifying exclusion here that means password as zero let's say i don't want underscore underscore v also because v, v is also not required so i'm specifying zero so both these fields will not be included when you are finding it so while finding it it will only include all the extra fields except for password and underscore underscore v okay now check with get okay so i'll just get the user with this id slash id send and you will see there is no underscore underscore v field there is no password field okay because while fetching it from the database itself we are not fetching password and underscore underscore v okay we are excluding those fields if in post the password will be saved in the database yes password will be saved in the database okay if you want to check you can check it in the database itself so i'll just uh, mongo sh use maybe serve then db dot users dot find okay so you can see this is the latest user we you have saved and you can find the password field here okay so password will be saved because what we are doing is we are saving the user first right we are saving it so we are saving it with password we are saving it and after saving we are removing that password from the object and then we are sending that out we are not saving it again okay and that's the reason password will be saved password will not be modified okay first it will be saved and then we are removing password from the saved object so that we can send a user without password so this is only possible if you are uh, first uh, saving it or modifying it okay and then do, you don't want to send that field then in that case you can use this method but in case of uh, finding you can uh, already exclude the parameters that you don't need okay so here the in from database itself these parameters will not come so you don't have to uh, do any undefined in core level itself okay so it's a excluding we are password if we are excluding password here okay but this is just done for your uh get by id what about get all if you do get all here you'll find in get all also password is coming okay password and underscore the screen i don't want these two fields here so in that case what you uh, you have to modify get all as well okay and this is this is the one get all so here uh remember find uh first has a uh, filter parameter and we don't we are not specifying any filter parameter so we'll just specify blank object here In the second object we'll specify password colon zero comma underscore underscore v colon zero so these two fields will not be included when you fetch all the users okay now let's try to find all users send and you will see the password and underscore underscore v is also not included okay uh, also we need to change it in a put and patch as well here also so in search as well you can do the same thing this is a find query just updated here 
here also you can specify the same um, exclusion parameters so while searching also it will not uh, uh, it will search all the fields but it will not return password and underscore underscore v uh, in put also we'll have to do the same thing when we are uh, saving the user and uh, sending it so after saving what you can do is uh, let's say const updated user equals to save it const after saved you can do password equals to okay we don't need to do this okay because we are uh, not storing password here okay we can just uh, do user save here okay because uh, you will not return it will not return password if it, if it returns then remove that using undefined okay just check it because i am not sure about it here also you can do the same thing in delete we are not returning the user data we are actually deleting it so we don't need to modify anything okay but in post case you can make it undefined and in rest of the cases you can specify the second parameter with uh, those fields as exclude or exclude them. Understood, everyone? Projections: How we can project the fields? Okay. Good. Try it out. Thank <laughs> you. 
What about others? Okay, then. Okay. Okay. So what all? Uh, so that's all we have done on the uh, the this part. Now let's see what all we can do with the model. Okay. Now once your schema is created. Okay, great. Now once your schema is created, okay, we can uh, add few methods into your model. Okay, so there are some uh, inbuilt methods like save, find, find by ID, find uh, or find one. Okay, we have a lot of methods into it, but we can have some uh, our own methods as well. Okay, uh, and we can um, have some. Uh, virtual methods as well. Now, what is virtual method? Let's see that. Okay. Uh, right now, if you see, uh, when I'm fetching a user, okay, let's uh, fetch a particular user. Let's see this one. Okay. I'm fetching a user. I can see name, the first, last, and then ID and everything. Right. What I want is I don't want a name first and last. I want to print the entire full name. I I want to get entire full name. Okay, uh, first and last can be there, but I need a full name as well. Okay, then what you can do is you can create virtual fields here. So now virtual fields are the fields uh, which are part of which are not part of your schema. They can be created um, at runtime. Okay, when you are getting uh, a uh, that object. Okay, it will not be stored into your database, but you can use multiple fields and combine them or make some basic operations on them and then return a new field from that okay so let's say i want a full name field by using first and last which will have first space last name okay so you can do uh, user schema dot virtual okay in, vir in virtual you have to specify the field name here okay so let's say my field name is full name and then after this, you need to specify a getter or setter. Now, getter means when you when you try to get this field, okay. Now, what uh, modifications you want to do when you try to get this field, okay? You specify your function here, and okay, okay. Like a getter, so you need to return something here. So we'll return, okay, this dot, okay. Now, why we are specifying this? Because we want we are using user schema. Now, user schema, this will refer to this schema. Okay. And when you call this, we can access this dot name, this field here. Okay. This dot name dot first plus space plus this dot name dot last. Okay. This way we can return a field. We can do a lot of the lot more other op operations as well, whatever you want to do it. But I just want to return first space last name. So I'm just returning it here. Okay. And make sure you are using a regular function, not the arrow function. Okay. If you remember from the modern JavaScript lecture where we have learned key, if you're using regular function, regular function may this keyword will not uh, will be uh, accessed from your object. Okay, this keyword will always refer to the object. Okay, but uh, in the arrow function, this keyword will not refer to the object, but it will refer to the, the object in which you are into. Like it will refer to the exports object, if you remember. Okay, now that's the reason you should use regular function here, not the arrow function. Okay, now the, we have a use, we have used a full name. But let's see whether this I'm able to get this full name field in my object when I'm trying to get it. Okay, let's get. And you will see there is no full name field. You can see name first, last, but there is no full name field. 
uh, why it is not happening because uh, by default virtual fields are not available okay you have to make them available by specifying comma to json colon then curly braces virtuals colon true okay now when you uh, basically why to json because this object is ultimately con getting converted to json okay so when it is getting converted to json we we'll specify virtuals true that means virtual fields will be included okay now let's see whether i am able to see full name or not send it and you will see full name field appearing over here okay you can get all users as well and see you can see full name is appearing for each and every field here. okay so that's how you can add extra fields but this full name field will not be available in your database okay you can check it out if you find you will not see full name field but if you try to get uh, the it using mongos it is a virtual field so you'll be able to access this virtual field when we try to get find the user or get the user understood this virtuals okay good try it out once done let me know then okay uh now we will stop here because uh, the next topic we are going to start is also related to your mongos and all okay but uh we will be doing uh login and authentication part okay jwt authentication token based authentication and login with the password now we are storing password as a plain password field but uh, we want to store it as an encrypted field so that also we'll see but uh, that is all related so i don't want to discontinue that part so we will do that in the next lecture okay so we will be doing uh, password encryption and all and token based authentication okay so we'll cover that topic in the next lecture 
then after that uh, the one topic is remaining from your expression node uh, which is uh, your relationships if you want to maintain relationships in mongodb okay mongodb is itself is a relationless database there is no relationship in mongodb okay so it's unstructured there is no relationship but still if you want to maintain relationship then there is a, a possibility we can do that by mo using mongos we can obviously do that relationships okay uh, we will do that uh, after that lecture okay and then i guess uh, two or three lectures will be there where we will be covering socket programming and file uploading okay so most probably the four mostly four lectures will be there okay so tomorrow there won't be any lecture because tomorrow uh, there is a puja in my house okay so uh, i won't be able to conduct lecture tomorrow so uh, i will compensate that lecture on saturday okay so the next lecture will be on friday and then on saturday okay saturday the same timing uh, we will have lecture 7 to 9 yeah okay and then afterwards, I guess Monday and Wednesday, we will have a lecture. Uh, sir, I think it's a question basically integration uh, non uh, SQL database. Na, na, ha. Uh, SQL uh, database MySQL, so you're going integration SQL. Uh, uh, SQL, so just the Karaita Siltam in Dakun name for take that. Then it's like same as a Paktakaiki, Mongo Satya upon the schema or a separately create Kurto, and it's just a current, it's a mean stack, right? So Mono Hitama the Mongo DB is over the open integration. But if you want to do it with MySQL, also you can do it. You just need a driver for that purpose. And uh, if you need an ORM, you can use ORM as well. There are uh, ORMs available for drivers, like we have Mongoos for MongoDB. We have uh, uh, ORMs for MySQL as well. Okay. So, in fact, by the egg, chota se demo da kuin, that is very good lecture. Okay. But it's like same thing. Okay. Yeah. Then let's stop it here. So the next lecture will be on Friday, not tomorrow. And this is in uh, Saturday, there will be a lecture. Okay. I'll post it in the GitHub, uh, sorry, not GitHub, in the WhatsApp group uh, the about the lecture time. Okay. Okay, then, shalom. Bye. Take care.